All right, so we are back with part two of our scientific revolution lecture. Um, so hopefully you guys answered this question and got it checked or gonna get it checked. Why were the discoveries of the astronomer like Galileo seen as radical and a threat to church authority? So we're gonna keep moving on. Okay, so I know some of you guys are like, ooh, the scientific method. We talk about this in science class, science class all the time and it's super annoying and it's so long and it's this whole idea of like, you have a problem and then you try to solve the problem, but you have to form a hypothesis. And with that hypothesis, then you move on through the steps and test the problem and then retest it and so forth. Okay. So despite the opposition of the church by the early 1600s, a new approach to science had emerged. It started with observation and experimentation. Most important complex mathematical calculations were used to convert the observation and experiments into scientific laws. This approach became known as a scientific method. You're like, Ms. Belvedere, what are you even talking about? Okay. So if you guys remember, I think you might've had this in science class that the scientific method, the idea that you state the problem, you gather information of the problem, you form a hypothesis, right? This is all about science, experiment the hypothesis, collect and record, analyze data, data, draw conclusions, and then you share that data. Okay. Without this scientific method, there would be multiple things that we would still not know today because of scientists going through this process, writing all this data down and so forth. Over time, the scientific method evolved into a step-by-step -step process of discovery. Scientists collected and accurately measured data. To explain data, scientists use reasoning to propose a logical hypothesis or possible explanation. They then tested the hypothesis with further observation or experimentation. This is what you guys do in science class all the time, right? So there are these two main scientific thinkers, okay? I'm gonna explain them first, but first I want you to think in your mind, okay? We're talking about Francis Bacon. How do you prefer your bacon? Crispy or not crispy, okay? Write it down in your journal. This is a very important question, okay? Write it down, write it down. Check with Ms. Belvedere, raise your hand after you wrote it down. What do you prefer? Do you like your bacon in the morning when you eat breakfast crispy? or not crispy, right? No, I'm just kidding, okay? But, um, so the new scientific method was very revolutionary. Two people that were highly involved in this revolution were Francis Bacon and Rene Descartes, okay? Francis Bacon, he was an English guy. He's the guy at the top, right? Lord Bacon, you see it right here, Francis Lord Bacon, okay? Then Rene Descartes, he's this bottom guy right here with the really weird mustache goatee thing going on. So each of them devoted their lives to understanding how truth is determined. Bacon and Descartes, okay, writing in the early 1600s, their, their writing was rejected over Aristotle's scientific assumptions, okay? So we're all tying it back. One scientist talks about something while the other scientist just works forward through the next thing and then the next thing and then they just refine it and make it better, okay? So Aristotle's scientific assumptions, they were then refined more by Francis Bacon and Rene Descartes. Now, Rene Descartes, he's kind of a special type of thinker. He's one of those thinkers that it's philosophical, okay? So philosophical thinkers, these are thinkers that like they don't understand they do understand, but they don't really calculate their work into the idea of writing mathematical equations, but instead their whole writings are about like the theoretical, the things that are not really of this world that are like kind of beyond us. So one of his most famous quotes is, I think therefore I am, which is whole, all talking about like, if I am a human being and I have the power to think of myself as a human being, that that must basically mean that I am real, right? So it's like these philosophical, like mind blowing kind of topics. If you have a, th a major in college that is over philosophy, it has to do with this, right? So they, um, they also challenged medieval scholars, the church who sought to make physical world fit into teachings with the church, right? So they also went against society and pushed against the grain. So Francis Bacon, Rene Descartes, they both very much influenced the whole idea of the scientific method. Francis Bacon, he was English. Rene Descartes, he was French. Descartes, he was more of a philosophical kind of teacher, okay? Now, medicine and chemistry. Like Copernicus and Bacon, Descartes 
As well, scientists rejected long-held assumptions. They relied on new technology such as microscopes. This is a picture right here of the very first microscope. Kind of cool, huh? I know that you guys, I think, have used them in class before, which is really cool in science class. But they were now starting to depend on these new inventions that were created in order to help support their theories. Okay, so there's this new guy in the game. Andreas Versalius, okay? I always think of him as like Versalius, veins, Versalius, it like both start with V. His whole idea is studying the human body. So medieval physicians relied on the works of ancient Greek physicians. Um, Galen, he was an old physician from like ancient Greek times. Galen, however, they made many errors, right? In part because they had limited knowledge about the human anatomy. We talked about before in the Renaissance that... These Renaissance painters, they were starting to like do autopsies for the first time and it was very illegal and it was very against the church to open up a body and to like study it. That's what they were starting to do with the scientific revolution. They were starting to understand like here are some sketches from Andreas Versalius's sketchbook understanding like, wow, we have veins in our body and these veins are what are pumping the blood through us. So his whole thing... Andreas Versalius, he published on the structure of the human body, okay? This was like his first book, the first accurate and detailed study of human anatomy. Versalius's careful and clear drawings corrected multiple errors that were seen in the medical world before the scientific revolution that these medical like doctors and physicians, they thought like, oh, the ancient Romans and Greeks they know the right way of how to treat the human body, but like, as we saw in the Middle Ages, how these doctors, these like black plague doctors had like these beaks and they didn't know what to understand about this whole like human body thing. The Renaissance, I mean, the scientific revolution made way for people like Versalius to come up with books with these sketches to help doctors better understand the human body itself. Careful and clear drawings corrected errors inherited from ancient classical authorities. He corrected errors that were seen back from Roman and Greek times. That was his thing. Now, the microscope. You're like, oh my goodness, how do I even read that name, right? Anton van Leeuwenhoek, okay? German, right? He perfected the single lens microscope. He started to do microscopic um, sort of observations over bugs, over hair, over like here in the background, you can see some of his sketches of like fleas, kind of gross, right? But this is the first time that we can understand viruses coming through things like fleas. Remember, fleas on rats from the Black Plague, right? He used them to examine tiny object objects such as lice or the mouths of bees, like what? Ew. But peering through his microscope at drops of water, he's surprised to see something for the very first time. Tiny little organisms. And he didn't even know what to call them. So he actually called them, this is like the super cutest thing ever, right? Very little animalcules. Like they didn't even know what to call these things because they were so small. Leaving Hook um, thus became the first person to see cells at a microscopic level and microorganisms like bacteria. This is the first time that people are trying to finally understand and grasp how we have bacteria passing through one thing and another. And it's kind of gross, but kind of cool, right? Now, he's actually known, um, last point, if you ever want to write this down in your chart or in your notes or whatever, he's actually called the father of microbiology because of this invention and this striving forward. Okay, last one. Are you ready for this? So, our last person, we all know, Isaac Newton, right? Isaac Newton, he is the link of sciences. He was a student at Cambridge University in England. He was the first one that we, I always kind of joke about this, like he discovered gravity, like we were all floating around before we saw Newton or before Newton was able to discover gravity. But actually, he just discovered the theory of gravity. According to one story, Newton, he saw one day when he was sitting at Cambridge University, he was sitting down underneath an apple tree and he noticed that the apple fell from the tree, right? And he pulled the apple 
and he held it and he said, wow, why is this apple so drawn to the earth? And then he realized we are all drawn to the earth and there's something that's pulling us down to the earth and we're not just floating around. He developed the basis for calculus as well, a branch of mathematics. And using mathematics, he showed that a single force keeps the planets in their orbits around the sun. And he called this force gravity. Now, you're saying, Miss Belvedere, how am I ever going to remember Isaac Newton and the apple story and gravity and all these things? And I'm like, here, listen. If anything helps you remember this, I hope that this picture right here of Isaac Newton as an apple photoshopped would help you realize and help you remember that Sir Isaac Newton is the guy that discovered the theory of gravity, okay? Um, with that said, I am not gonna make you guys do this extra assignment at the end, unless if I tell you in class, in person, it might be an assignment that we're doing, but don't worry about this next slide. But with these different scientists, you should have either a full chart or a full set of notes over the scientific revolution. This revolution PowerPoint will also be um, posted on Google Classroom. Make sure to like and subscribe my page. Don't forget to buy my merch. Um, thank you and have a good day. Bye.